For those of you who are newer to crypto, I hope you won't be scared away by what happened today because it felt like a ride at Six Flags Magic Mountain. However, and maybe I'm totally in denial here, I don't feel like we are in the bear market, that this is the beginning of the bear market. And why do I say that? I say that because I feel calm inside. When things are crazy on the outside and I feel calm inside, that's my intuition saying things are going to be okay. It's going to be all right. And normally when things look calm on the outside, but I have a crazy feeling going on inside, that is normally that my gut is saying, be prepared. You don't want something negative to come, but it's coming. I'm Joanna Garzilli. This is Crypto Angel Network. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and for sharing the video, for liking, and especially your comments. And I will respond to you within a 48 hour period. Please be aware of the scammers as well. So first things first, I wanna just, um, a couple of things that happened today for me with the exchanges, you let me know. I wanna hear among the other crypto angels, what did you go through? Because it will be helpful to everyone else here as well. And uh, so, yeah, I wanted to tell you a couple of things I experienced with the exchanges. Uh, the other thing is that I want to come back and talk a little bit more about a pattern that I'm seeing. And I'm wondering, are you seeing that same pattern as well? And lastly, I want to talk about what I see in relation to that with US dollar tether. And that is something that I am watching closely too. I don't feel like there's anything to worry about at the moment. I think especially for those who are new to trading, especially for US citizens, especially in this crazy volatility, is do not do leverage margin, margin trading unless you're a really experienced trader and you can afford to throw money away. And um, I, I just, I, I, I think that that, you know, even then when a market crashes that so long as you don't panic sell then the token can come back and you can regain your position if let's say you you bought a hundred dollars worth of ethereum and your ethereum went down to 10 cents but as long as you have it there and it comes back up then you're not losing it you're only losing it if you take it out and 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 if you had an unrealized return and then you just, either from leverage trading, you got liquidated or you just sold it at a total loss. With that being said, let me go ahead and share my screen. And the first experience I want to share with you, and there's two things here, is I got a notification this morning from Gate.io, which I do use quite a bit. I do love. My link is in the bio if you want to do trading on that. Obviously, do it at your own risk. Please, like, please be careful and, and do what feels right for you because you have to be responsible for your finances, for your choices. So Gate.io, uh, they suspended Ethereum and ERC-20 withdrawals due to high gas fees. This is when Bitcoin and everything just absolutely plummeted. And I remember in the, the last 48 hours, it's I, I saw my portfolio just, thank God it's still there. Certain things were in profit because I bought earlier in them, but definitely you know, I saw sizable shifts there. And just uh, for transparency, I did not sell anything. I am, I'm not concerned. I have no intention of selling anything right now. So it's, uh, yeah, they suspended withdrawal due to the high gas fees, I guess, because people were absolutely freaking out, which reached a thousand G way. It says we will resume the Ethereum and ERC withdrawals as soon as the gas fees lowers down to the affordable level. So that was eight hours and 26 minutes ago of recording this. It's May the 19th. And uh, it's three, almost 3.20 in the afternoon Pacific Standard Time. Now, at the same time that that happened, uh, I tried to hop onto Coinbase on my on my phone, and I couldn't get on Coinbase. Like normally, I can just go log in. It, the screen was a blank. I tried multiple times because I just wanted to you know, just check in there on the exchange, and nothing came up. So, 
just for future, I guess if you you know for for planning, you said I feel like one's got to just uh, if for example there was some sort of flash crash to do, what do you do? You don't do anything when there's a storm there. Just batten down the hatches and don't try and go out in it because the exchanges, like I said, the exchanges, everything, it seemed down. So what, please let me know in the comments, what for you, what, ex, what did you notice on the different exchanges that you were on? Did you notice that everything got backed up and you, and you were not able to trade at all? Or if you wanted to move funds off of the exchange, what was your experience with that? The second thing that I think is very cool that Gate did here is it says so they extended the crypto loan liquidation time for users who didn't have a chance to repaint the loan or add more collateral during the dramatic market move on May 19th, 2021. After 11 a.m. UTC, we've extended the crypto loan liquidation time to May 20, 2021. And so that is positive. Another thing that had happened recently, interestingly, because someone had said in the talked in the comments about FEG, and um, I just wanted um, FEG actually they removed FEG because there were some issues that came up with it. On um, let me see if I can find this FEG FEG token news. So yeah, that was newly listed, and. Um, where is that news? I just saw that a couple of days ago. They were taken, they delisting. So there was another, they did it on, um, let me see if I can find it. But for those of you that are looking at FEG, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I, at the time when, when I looked at when it got listed, again, the systems where I got off of instinct and who knows with instinct, it can be right, it can be wrong. I like to use a combination of fundamental, technical analysis and intuition. Uh, but, um, yeah, a couple of days after it, it, uh, it was delisted there. Um, so here we go. Here's an article on this Shanghai aping out of gorilla token, digital dollar by the, here we go. Where is this here? Meme coin feed every gorilla. Feg was a source of drama after memes were posted of Chinese president, uh, Xi Jinping, the, uh, the token claims to use its revenue to take care of gorillas and has been gaining attention among animal-related tokens, amassing a market cap of over a billion dollars. Some Chinese community members found the memes offensive, and after not finding support from the team, began to abandon the project. It went viral, and Chinese centralized exchanges, including OKEX and Gate.io, responded by delisting the token. Feg's price dropped around 75% before rebounding slightly on Thursday. The community became divided, with one side claiming Chinese censorship was being forced upon the the cryptocurrency community. In all likelihood, the decision to delist the token was more out of caution than outrage, as cryptocurrency exchanges operating in a legal gray area often find it advantageous to avoid being associated with scandal and controversy, which we know just an example of that was with um, XRP when they were being investigated by the SEC and they were taken off of Coinbase, even though they were the number three position on coin market cap. So that was, um, you know, it is, the things are very, very risky. So that, I just wanted to share that because uh, that had just been a listing that had gone on and, uh, you know, please, please, on, on Gate, please, please be careful. But um, I feel like Gate has handled things well uh, in terms of, um, what was I going to show, in, in terms of, you know, their news and how they're handling things. So I still feel good about them as an as an exchange. And if that changes for some reason, I'm going to let you know, <laughs> okay? Um, you know, in the long run for me, I think longer term plan in terms of uh, exchanges and what I see with the regulations coming down the pipe, I'm probably going to, even though the fees are higher on Coinbase, I'm probably going to like, just keep it more simple and have more of my assets on Coinbase, even though I do like um, Shiba a lot and I do like Gate Token a lot. And I'm I'm not looking to leave those positions anytime soon. I am set to take a certain amount of profits on them, but I'm going like, to let the, the rest ride up because I feel that they're really strong in the long run. Now, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is this pattern that I was seeing. And you just tell me, am I imagining this? 
every time when I was doing technical analysis the other day, looking at the meme coins, I was like, oh, it's all similar. Look at this, this pattern. Well, for a start, and I'm going to get onto this in a second, I find it interesting that Tether is meant to be a, a stable coin uh, right now. You know, when I did some trades the other week, it was zero, zero, like around, I got some, I think, 11, 12, and 14 when I was doing those trades. Right now, it's 0, 0, 0024. Like, wow, how, how stable is this? I mean, there's money being made there, I think. Or am I imagining that? Am I, like, am I not seeing things right here? Um, so, so, yeah, I just wonder what what's the deal with that? Why? I just, I would have thought Tether would be more stable. And I'm going to show you something in a minute again, where I'm just, I'm going to be watching super, super carefully. Uh, but look here, I know we, you know, we saw with Bitcoin, but look at, and I'm just showing this on Coinbase here. Look at the pattern. It's like, to me, it looks like all the tokens are doing, almost doing the same thing apart from makers slightly different. But look, you know, I'm not zooming in on any of the charts. It just looks the same. I'm like, is there, am I imagining, is there some type of um, market maker or some type of software that is just plugged in, that is knowing what's happening with the trades, that why is this all the same if the marketplace is so volatile and varied? Why is that the case? And one of the reasons I say this is because the report I had read from the Attorney General of New York who pointed out about these different market maker softwares that can you know, they have a massive advantage, a massive edge over retail traders like myself. And I, I, for most of us, like most of you here. And um, so it does definitely, it makes me concerned. I, I understand that Coinbase does allow uh, separate, certain trading de desks to plug in to their system. And also that, you know, in terms of things not being regulated, uh, people who work for certain exchanges, they can, if they know certain news, they can go and trade and and do things to their advantage from being on the inside because you know, there's not, it's not regulated like the stock exchange. We don't, there's no uh, punishment for insider trading, but look, see, look at this. This is, it's, it just looks the same across the board for me here. Can someone explain in the comments Please let me know your theory. What do you, um, Kuchi Sensai, Stephen Harrison, Ray Clamaco, Justin Barr, um, who else? Oh my gosh, there's a number of you here. Joshua Wana. Let me know your thoughts. And anyone else that I haven't called out here on this, I'm sorry. Please, like, please go ahead and share what you think. Okay, Matic is like is defies it, and I wonder if it's something because Matic's so brilliant. Um, with what it's uh, doing, and it's just had a pump. It's holding strong. It's the only th one that I see that is really different right now. That is sort of defying this pattern. Else, what you know that I'm just seeing mirrored across the board here. Um, the same thing. I wonder if I can. I don't think it'll show here from my. But again, with with Shiba, with Akita, with Pig, with. You, you can just, you can see, you can see the, the again, this, I, I see you, that's what I was seeing with it. I mean, like when I go, say, for example, I go to Lion and um, see if it'll come up. See, I'm not, I'm not going to zoom all the way out here, but you can see that, um, you know, with, with Lion here, um, it went through this dip and then this little pump here. And then if I go to Shiba, let's just go to Shiba. I mean, it's similar. It dipped even a little bit more, but that same sort of pattern. If you go to Akita, if you go to Akita here, same thing. See, you can see these different, these patterns here. What was the other one? Pig. So I'm just, that that's what I'm noticing here. Look, I mean, it's so similar. Now, one of the things that I have done as well is that, and I did this before this crash happened, but I 
a strategy that I'm implementing now is that I don't want to ever panic sell. So I've planned with certain tokens that I've gone into and I'm going to take profits as they move up. And, and then once I've reached those profits and made back my original investment, I will keep some of, you know, a number of tokens in there just to go, okay, I'm prepared to, oh, I'm prepared, excuse me, that's my little timer. Um, I'm prepared to stay in this for the longer run and just, you know, and just to see what happens. If something great happens, great. And if not, that's fine too. So that's my approach that I have. I want to um, just bring you over here to Tether and um, about this from what I showed you, just piecing this all together. Now, this was an article that came out 12 hours ago, and then the you know this crash just happened soon afterwards. So um, Tether reaches new lows in quest to avoid being audited. Well, I've there's I've did a video on Tether last week. We we're waiting. The hearing was meant to be happening today. And I want to just go down to, you know, here's the breakdown. I did another whole breakdown on this, but I just want to show you a couple of things here. <laughs> sort of, um, and let me just acknowledge again, the writer with this, the writer from this is Jordan Atkins from CoinGeek. So Jordan said, Tether knows what it's doing. I wonder if Jordan's being a little bit sarcastic there. General counsel Stuart Hogner has become the de facto spokesperson for Tether, particularly when the question of backing is concerned. In one way, this makes sense as their general counsel. It's only natural that Hogner would take point in conversations with regulators and law enforcement. Okay, let's keep going down. But they, basically, he said Tether has made to its reserves been misleading, if not outright lie. And that includes those which have come directly from Hogner. All right. So Hogan's public statements on Tether follow a clear pattern. Whenever the company is backed into a corner or when skepticism as to Tether backing reaches a peak, Hogan will pop up on a podcast or release a statement assuring everybody that everything is okay and that any implication that Tether is being dishonored is nothing but FUD. He'll do this even when publicly available evidence directly contradicts his assurances. Does make me concerned. Does. This exact pattern has already played out with Tether's pie chart document. Less than a day after it was published, Hogner wrote a 1400 word medium post entitled Tether is setting a new standard for transparency and responding to criticism that is untethered from facts. In it, he complains that skeptics of Tether so-called proof of backing are moving the goalposts and spreading pat pat um, patently false and misleading misinformation and outlandish conspiracy theories. This is a rich position for Hogner to take, considering that same medium post also also says this, after an extensive investigation for more than two years and reviewing more than 2.5 million documents provided by Tether and Bitfinex, the New York Attorney General's office made no negative findings whatsoever that Tethers were not fully backed, nor were ever issued without backing. Now wait for it, right? In the next paragraph, this is an outright lie. The settlement agreement between Tether and the Attorney General's office signed by Tether and Bitfinex is explicit, and they had to pay an $18.5 million fine. Because of Tether's inability to conduct significant banking activity during this time, it could not itself hold dollars sufficient to back the hundreds of millions of new Tethers that have entered the market. Until September 15, 2017, the only US dollars held by Tether ostensibly backing the approximately 442 million Tethers in circulation was the approximately 61 million on deposit at the Bank of Montreal. It's a little bit scary. Like, where are the reserves? And if you go back to this whole thing of being backed one-to-one -one ratio by US currency, it's just not true. It isn't true. And this is like, I'm like, is this, is the SHIT going to hit the fan on this? Like, what, like, what is going to happen with this? Because the tether is being used for a lot of trading pairs. And I guess like if you're in a certain currency, who was it? One of our crypto angels here fantastically said, was it crypto news? I think said that, um, well, one could, um, you, you could move to another wallet and then you could trade into Ethereum, maybe on Uniswap or PancakeSwap. So there are other ways. Let's say, for example, if you're in a token that is with the US dollar trading pair, I guess you can move your, your token to uh, some form of another exchange. Or if this were the case that US dollar tether were to get into big trouble, 
there is, I guess, their competitor, US dollar coin. And I haven't researched US dollar coin enough yet, but I guess they are, you know, they're competitors to each other. Um, her, do, 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 let's just go down to here, the company's ongoing ca campaign of deception, obfuscation regarding its reserves. And, um, you know, we're going to just see what happens. There's going to be more data. There's going to be more analysis coming on this. Whereas if anyone's still not getting it, this is the countdown for the deadline when they have to supply the documents. Okay, so um, there's a, I guess there's a, a doc, where does this go to Twitter here? Let's just take a quick look at this. If that is here, stop the FUDLAND. Let's see what this is. Let's just take a little look. Okay. Mandated reporting on certain business operations within 90 days of the effective date of this settlement agreement and on a quarterly basis thereafter for two years following the effective date of the settlement, Bitfinex and Tether will provide documents substantiating Tether's reserve accounts in a form substantially similar to what Tether's provided during OAG's investigations. For those of you who don't know, OAG is um, Office of Attorney General. And then verification that they and Bitfinex and Tether have approximately segregated client reserve and operational accounts. And um, sec because that was why they got fined in the process, because they were taking funds from Tether, which is meant to be the stable coin, its own thing, and moving it over to Bitfinex to cover losses, um, trading losses on the Bitfinex exchange. And you just can't go and do that. So um, I just, I wonder, you know, when I go back to this, let me just come back over here. And again, I just, you know, just look at what is happening here. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, here's Tether again. It's on on uh, on Coin Gecko. It's one point zero eight. Um, it's it's definitely up. I mean, there has to be. How are they making their their money there? Each time when one does a trade, there's even though it's a stable coin, there's money being made. And so my point being, I just don't know how stable it is. And that if something happens with this, and I want to remain optimistic, but I just, I just, it's on my mind still. If something isn't going away and it's niggling at me, it's because it's, it's there for a reason. So more will be revealed. Uh, but I'm still, like I said, just in conclusion, I'm not worried about everything that is happening right now. I think this is why it's more important than ever that this idea, we, we, we read it, we hear it, we see it, we know it, but what we know sometimes and what we do are two different things. Don't put in more than you can afford to lose. I love what Ivan and Tech said this morning of make sure whatever your, your rent or your mortgage, your bills that you can pay them that for whatever that you're going into, because these markets are crazy, I will be very, very surprised if this is the beginning of a long, cold winter, a full-on bear market that we're in. I just don't think so. And I could be totally, totally wrong, but I just don't think we're done. I, I, I feel that I, I wish I'd had some funds to go and put in, to go and buy up these tokens that are on discount, like uh, Cosmos and Polkadot and, oh my gosh, Cardano's on this. I mean, there's, there's so many good tokens that are there. And um, maybe some of you did get those buys in. Let me know in the comments, what did you do? How did you handle this flash crash today? Or if it isn't a flash crash, what is your plan? What are you going to do? And the last thing that I'll say is that I think that Harmony One for our fellow Harmonots in the community, I think it's held really well considering. And that says to me, when I see the price holding like that, because a lot of people understand that despite all the FUD and the comments and the things that are happening on Twitter, the people who are really active within blockchain, within DeFi, they're not panicked. They're in this for the long run and they're not just um, just selling their tokens. So that was very positive to see. And also I, I've been invited to be part of, I feel, re, I feel really, really blessed that I'm part of uh, the Guardians of Persistence X, uh, XPRT team. And so I'm excited to learn all the things they're doing with that. And I just saw some very positive 
fantastic conversations in the Telegram for that. And the, uh, the, uh, the founder of Polygon is one of the major advisors and co-founders for XPRT. So they are very closely connected to each other. And it was just good to see that this, what's happened in the market is not facing them. For anyone who is working within DeFi, within blockchain, it's business as usual. I'm Joanna Garzilli. This is Crypto Angel Network. Again, thank you for subscribing to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And I'm sending you lots of love.